Good morning students. Today we can see about the two divisions of bryophytes. That is the bryophytes are divided into liverworts and uh, mosses. So first we can see about liverworts. When we see about the liverworts habitat where it lives, uh, it lives in moist shady habitat. Isn't it? Just like any bryophyte, the liverworts also grow in moist and shady habitat like the banks of the stream or in the marshy area where more water content is there or in a damp soil, the soil with water content or even in the bark of the trees or deep in the woods. So in all these places, we can see the liverworts growing. Now when we see about the plant body, the plant body of the liverwort is thalloid. Now what you are seeing in this picture is the markensia. Like this rickshia is also there. So markensia and rickshia are examples of liverworts. So when you see the plant body of this markensia rickshia, it is thalloid in nature. Thalloid means it is thallus like it is not differentiated into stem root and leaf only stem like leaf like and root like structures are there which we can say it as the thallus okay so the plant body is thalloid and it is dorsi ventral what do you mean by dorsi ventral it is having a dorsal surface you can see this is the dorsal surface the dorsal surface and below that you can see the ventral surface that is if you take a leaf and see it is having a dorsal and a ventral surface isn't it like that the thallus of this liverwort is dorsi ventral okay and it can be seen growing prostrate on the substratum or to any or to the soil surface okay what is prostrate? Uh, it will be growing horizontally on the so soil surface. It will not grow vertically upward. That we can say it as it grows prostrate on the soil surface or onto any substratum where it is growing. Okay. Then some of them have leaf like structures. Okay. That they are the leafy members. So the leafy members of this liverwurst they are having tiny very small leaf like appendages what is an appendage appendage means an outgrowth or a projection so leaf like structures are projecting or it can be seen in two rows how many rows they are found the leaf like structures are found in two rows okay so the leafy members are having leaf like appendages or leaf like projections which are seen in two rows. Now, where they are found, uh, they are found in the stem-like structure. Okay, here you can see the small leafy-like structures. So, they are found in the stem-like structures because they don't have a true stem. Okay. Now, when we see about the reproduction, they reproduce both asexually and sexually. Asexual reproduction in liverworts occurs by fragmentation. It takes place by fragmentation of the thalli. Here, the thalli will be dividing into fragments and each fragment can develop into a new liverwort. Okay. Then, another by another method also, they can reproduce asexually. That is by the formation of specialized structures called as gemme. Okay, they produce specialized structures called gemme. Gemme is plural, singular is gemma. And what is this gemme? They are green multicellular asexual buds. Okay, they are green colored multicellular asexual buds. And where they are present, they develop in small receptacles. You can see here, these are the receptacles. That is cup-shaped structures and they are called as gemma cup. Okay, so each one is a gemma cup, a cup-like structure. Inside that gemma cup, what is situated? The gemmae are present. So, actually it is an asexual bud, isn't it? So, what happens? When it is fully matured, this gemmae, the asexual bud, that is the gemme gets detached from the parent body that is detached means it gets separated from the parent body and then it germinate to form a new individual or a new liverworth okay so uh, another method of asexual reproduction is by producing gemme gemme are a green multicellular asexual buds and where they develop inside the receptacles called as gemma cup and where these receptacles are present or where these gemma cup are present they are present in the thallus so in the thallus only the gemma cup are present okay 
now when the gem may mature when it grows it gets detached okay it gets separated from the parent body and then it develop it germinate or it develops into a new individual this is how the liver was reproduce asexually now when we see about the sexual reproduction here both male and female sex organs are formed okay the male sex organ is the antheridium and the female sex organ is the archegonium this is the actually the archegoniophore and this is actually the antheridiophore okay but that much detail we no need to see here uh, just you should know what is the male and the female sex organ the male sex organ is the antheridium and the female sex organ is the archegonium the male sex organ produces the male gamete called called the antherozoid and the female sex organ that is archegonium produces the female gamete that is the egg okay now when the antherozoids or the male gametes are produced they will be released out and uh, rain should be there or water should be there for them to move and reach the archegonium and to fertilize with the egg for that only we say that it needs water for completing its sexual reproduction so if rainfall is there what will happen when the rain drops fall on to the antheridium if mature antherozoids or the male gamete are there it will be released and it spread in that water droplet itself it will spread and reach the archegonium okay otherwise they should be uh, filled with water that is they should be immersed in water so the male ga gamete can be carried by the water current and it uh, can reach the female gamete okay so these uh, sex organs can be formed on the same thalli okay it can be formed on the same thalli or on different thalli okay if different thalli uh, it will be little apart isn't it so surely they need the drop of water for them to move from one thalli to the other okay that's why we say they need water to complete the sexual reproduction suppose if it is in the same thalli it will be close to each other nearby but even then they need some moisture content or a water droplet is required okay thus it will be the male gamete that is the and the rhizoid will be reaching the female gamete that is the egg and what happens fertilization occur as a result of fertilization what will be formed uh, a diploid zygote will be formed okay a diploid zygote will be formed as a result of fusion of male and the female gamete so uh, zygote is diploid why because it is having two sets of chromosome from where they are receiving the two sets of chromosome one set it gets from the male gamete another set it gets from the female gamete thus both fuse together and as a result a diploid zygote is formed now this zygote will be developing into the sporophyte okay the zygote develops into the sporophyte the sporophyte is having a foot seat and capsule okay here you can see the sporophyte this is the sporophyte okay so it is having a food seat and capsule it is not like what we have seen in the general features it is very small isn't it so here it is not uh, um, differentiated into water many celled or uh, a uh, larger structure the structure is very much reduced so the number of cells in this sporophyte will also be reduced okay so the foot will be having one cell or a few cell or a seta will be having one cell and capsule can be formed of one cell okay normally one cell can be there or two or uh, three cells can be there okay so like that a few cell will be there in this sporophytic stage in the case of liverworts not in the case of mosses okay in the case of liverworts the sporophyte is very much reduced and it is differentiated into foot seta and a capsule foot is the basal part by which it is attached to the gametophyte seta is a small elongated portion capsule is the swell and tip okay now what happens in the capsule a few cells present in the capsule will be undergoing meiosis and it produces haploid spores what will be formed haploid spores will be formed why it is haploid because when reduction division occurs when meiosis occurs the number of chromosome will be reduced to half in the daughter cells 
okay if the parent cell is having two set of chromosome half of that is one set that is the daughter cell will be having only one set of chromosome okay that we can say it as haploid so haploid spores will be produced and where they will be produced within the capsule okay then the spores you can see at the spores when they are matured they will be released out and when they come in contact with a suitable substratum, it will develop into a new free living gametophyte. Okay, it develops into a new free living gametophyte. Okay, so next plant will be developing. Yes, so this is how the liverworts will be completing their life cycle. Okay, now when we see about the mosses, the mosses. The main plant body is the gametophyte. In in uh, rickshia or in liverworts also the main plant body is water. Is it is a gametophyte? Why? Because it bears the gametes. It produces the gamete. Same way in mosses also the main plant body is the gametophyte. Okay, because it produces the gamete. Now this gametophyte consists of two stages. What are the two stages? The first stage is called the protonema. Okay, from a spore, the part which is developing is called a protonema. Okay, what is it? The stage which is developing from a spore, directly from a spore, that is called protonema. It is a creeping green colored branched filamentous stage. So you can see here creeping and a branched filamentous structure. This is the protonema. Okay, now the second stage is said to be the leafy stage. Okay, first stage is protonema, second stage is water, leafy stage. You can see the leaf-like structures here. Okay, now it will be uh, developing from the secondary protonema. Okay, the leafy stage develops from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud. So, from the primary protonema here you can see so many branches are there they are the primary protonema isn't it from that as bud like structures as a lateral bud the secondary protonema will be developing and from that only the leafy stage will be developing okay so the leafy stage will develop from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud like structure just like in a tree how a lateral branch is arising just like that here also as a lateral bud like structure from the secondary protonema a leafy stage will be formed okay what is that secondary protonema it is from the primary that is uh, from the spore a protonema is developing that we can say it as the primary protonema then it produces so many branches and so many bud like structure that buds will develop into the secondary protonema from the secondary protonema lateral buds will be arising and it develops into the leafy stage okay now this leafy stage is upright in nature okay it is upright but what about the protonema stage it is prostrate prostrate means uh, growing horizontally upright means what it will be growing erect okay upwards it grows it will be growing erect and it is formed of slender axis okay it will be very thin slender in nature okay it will be growing upwards and it will be having spirally arranged leaves actually it is not the actual leaf but leaf like structures by spirally arranged leaves are present in the leafy stage okay and this leafy stage is attached to the soil through multicellular and branched root like structure called rhizoids okay so how it will be attaching to the soil it will be attaching to the soil through multicellular branched root like structures called rhizoids okay and this gametophyte will be bearing the sex organs in them okay in this gametophyte only the sex organs will be formed now when we see about the reproduction here also they reproduce asexually as well as sexually asexual reproduction we can also consider it as vegetative reproduction okay so why we say it as vegetative because vegetative part is involved in reproduction actually it is a form of asexual reproduction vegetative reproduction is also a form of water 
asexual reproduction okay so here also in mosses also the vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation so here the protonema will be breaking it uh, um, break into many uh, pieces okay and then each piece can develop into a new young one okay or even budding can occur so this occur this buds will be developing in the secondary protonema actually the leafy stage itself is developing from the secondary protonema isn't it so that secondary protonema can develop buds and that buds can also develop into a new moss plant okay so vegetatively they reproduce or asexually they reproduce by fragmentation and budding from the secondary protonema then how the sexual reproduction occurs again the sex organs will be formed where the sex organs will be developed at the tip apex of the leafy stage apex means what the tip of the leafy shoots okay so at the tip here in this tip region what will be formed the male and the female sex organs will be formed the male sex organ is called the anthridium and the female sex organ is called the archegonium so here you can see the male sex organ and here the female sex organ this will be formed in the tip okay tip of the leafy uh plant leafy stage okay now the anthridium will be producing the male gamete called anthrocyte archegonium will be producing the female gamete called the egg okay now when rain is there or if water content is there through that water the anthrocytes or the male gamete will reach the female gamete that is it reaches the archegonia where the female gamete is present and then fertilization occur what is fertilization fusion of the male and the female gamete occurs as a result a diploid zygote will be formed now this zygote develops into the sporophyte okay the zygote will be developing into the sporophyte here you can see clearly the sporophytic stage is there isn't it so the sporophyte uh, uh, stage consists of foot seta and capsule foot is the basal part by which the sporophyte is attached to the gametophyte and seta is the elongated slender portion this elongated structure is the seta and at the tip the swollen structure is the capsule okay so it is deployed in nature yes then inside this capsule some of the cells deployed cells will undergo meiosis again what is meiosis it is the reduction division in which uh, what will happen the number of chromosomes will be reduced to, to half okay so the deployed cells when it undergoes meiosis it produces haploid spores so haploid spores are formed after meiosis and this spores will be released out which when fall on to a suitable substratum will develop into a new moss plant okay so they follow various mechanism for the dispersal of the spore dispersal of spore means what for the release and spread of the spore okay by the help of or with the help of water with the help of air they can be carried from one place to another place the spore can reach different places and uh, when it comes in contact with a suitable substratum it develops into a new gametophyte okay now some of the examples of mosses are funaria polytrichum sphagnum moss so the picture what you are seeing is the funaria then other examples are polytrichum and sphagnum moss okay so that is about the two divisions of bryophytes